everybody what is going on welcome welcome to the channel i'm deborah this is prush intuitive and we are doing our weekly astrology so normally i load these up uh or upload these <laughs> at the beginning of the week it was a little bit uh busy yesterday so i'm moving it to tuesday but we'll still look at the astrology for the 10th through the 16th of April. Uh, we are coming off of a full moon in Libra. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we are in Aries season right now. So Aries season governs the house of self, who we are, how we show up in our world, etc. And then Libra is all about partnership. It's the opposite of that, right? Like how we bring ourselves into our partnerships, relationships, and the adjusting that we need to do accordingly. Collective, we're in this shift of like, you know, really kind of weeding out the people, places, and things that just aren't really serving our life path. Uh, there was a lot of purging that happened over the past couple years. And now I feel like we're in this energy of really finding our grounding, finding our stability through the hard work, you know, doing the, um, we see Saturn in Pisces. So it's challenging us with the obstacles, the limitations that come up to really evaluate, like, do I need to do something, adjust, adjust my behavior, how you know, whatever I'm showing up in this dynamic in order to help it heal and grow? Or is this something that I need to cut out? Uh, hard questions, guys, right? <laughs> never easy, never easy. We like the human brain likes being comfortable. Change is not the most fun. But ironically, change is the one constant. Um, we have a little bit easier of an energy this week, which I like, at least in the beginning of the week. This will help balance out that full moon last week, depending on what you're navigating in your life will really dictate how intense, how extreme the energy was for you. It could, br it could have brought up a lot of um, tension, fights, you know, uh, more difficult dynamics in relationships. So if you did uh, bump into some of those things, sending love, <laughs> I know it's not easy, right? Um, but I like that that's why we're kind of having easier transits in the beginning of the week because the sun comes into conjunct with Jupiter, which just may basically means they align, they're right on top of each other. The sun deals with our ego, our identity, sense of self, and Jupiter really is our fortune, our abundance. So those aspects really speak to um, how, you know, the more we honor ourselves, the better the abundance is going to be. Both of these uh, planets are in Aries. So again, that confirmation of the need to really get clear on what we want, what we're trying to grow and build and showing up accordingly, you know? We can dream of having the most beautiful, perfect relationship, but if we don't put in the work, then, you know, <laughs> it's either gonna take a really long time to manifest that utopia or, you know, it's, you know, well, we won't put it in a negative spit on it, okay. Um, so yeah, so Sun, conjunct Jupiter, I feel like that's really great. And then we have Venus trying to Pluto. So basically meaning uh, Venus is in Gemini. We're dealing with the duality, especially when it comes to people, places, and things. You know, just how every person, situation can have dualistic components you know there can be some really great things about someone and some super not great things you know what i mean um and when we understand that principle from the perspective of love care nurture understanding like you know even though like that person has these aspects i'm still gonna love them for who they are I don't have to, you know, engage, take responsibility for their bad behavior. I can have my boundaries accordingly. Um, but that's really coming from that place of love. And it helps 
uh, being trying, which is a harmonious component to Pluto, it's helping us make different decisions, better decisions, heart honoring decisions, even through the tough stuff. So that energy really is throughout the beginning of the week. And then towards the last couple of days, Venus actually goes square to Saturn. So I feel like we get this little moment of reprieve where we're like, oh yeah, like things are actually okay. <laughs> you know, they're getting a little bit better. I'm seeing some of the fruits of my labor manifest, you know, little gifts of abundance with that Jupiter energy. Um, you know, especially like I said, that Chiron, Chiron is also conjunct to the sun. So that maximizes that concept that the, um, the more we heal, the more we grow, the more we see the bigger picture, the better it's going to be for us. Um, but like I said, at the end of the week, uh, Venus becomes square to Saturn. So that is going to this kind of like maybe pretty rose colored glasses perspective that we get in the beginning of the week might be a little altered and shattered by the end of the week. Saturn always teaches us our lessons. So as with any type of love, nurture, support, it can, if we have too much of it, it can make us apathetic, lazy, kind of meh, despondent, you know? So that's the value of really making sure that we're not resting on our laurels, that we're continuing to be vigilant and do the work. And I'm not saying like be this little robot, you know, all the time, but we have this energy. There's a lot of planets in um, Aries and Taurus right now, and it's such a great energy to build, to nurture, intentions, goals, aspirations, etc. Um, you know, and it, like I said, it's not all easy street because I feel like where we have our harder planetary placements, i.e. Saturn in Pisces, Black Moon Lilith in uh, Leo, Aries, or Aries, Mars <laughs> in Cancer, the uh, south node in Scorpio, like all those placements really kind of play to, you know, this um, like places that we need our ego to be validated, you know, <laughs> we need our pride to be stroked, whatever that saying is. Um, and, and that's where it can get really dangerous, right? Like if we rely too much on that, um, you know, we always hit a point in time where people aren't available, you know, where they don't necessarily want to tell us how awesome they are. And it might even be going the other way, right? Where like they think you suck. <laughs> and, you know, you have to be your own best cheerleader. That's what Aries season is all about, you know. It's taking away the BS of places that we're not worthy, that we don't feel valuable, and really loving ourselves. Putting that energy, self-love, self-care into who we are first, because that's actually building that fire. Um, it's actually what's allowing us to kind of like overcome different obstacles that we have in our life, which I know is kind of like a rule of thumb, but uh, is there anything else we want to talk about? Yeah, so Venus definitely has a heavy planetary placement this week, meaning that there is going to be a lot of focus on that Venus energy with it first being trying to Pluto, like I said, that ability to like, you know, have an easier time with the changes that we're making, but then it's going to be the hard work on the other side, right? So Sacred Union, Juno, and seventh house of partnership just popped up so you might have some partnership issues this week wanting things to look a little bit different mars energy in cancer is very much like grabbing the bull by the horns and making something happen um so we want to make sure that we're not being too forceful to controlling in our relationships there is going to be a lot of feeling around the changes that need to be made. But I also feel like it's coming from this place of empowerment. 
with Pluto and the moon in Aquarius conjunct one another, it's basically talking about like, you're going to feel empowered, like to fight for yourself, you know, like you're going to want to step outside of the box, kind of rebel against the norm, etc. It's hard because it hurts your feelings or it does make you feel a certain kind of way. And that's where that south node in Scorpio really speaks to making sure that you're not getting back at someone <laughs> just to get back at them because that actually slows down the um, slows down the manifestation, slows your roll down. We wouldn't want to do that now, would we? Ooh, ooh, okay. I don't really read reversals, but if we looked at the twelfth house. It rules our subconscious, the fears, the anxieties. So making sure that's not getting the best of you, the emotions around what's happening. Everything changes, whether we like it to or not, whether we want it to or not. That's just the nature of life. It's to grow, to evolve, etc. And usually when things are being removed, it's for our ultimate good. You know, and that really has been the name of the game lately. Finding the places that we are really devoted to and that are devoted to us. You know, there has to be that synergy in order to work harmoniously. If there's always tension, always discord, frustration with people, places, and things, that's what it's going to be, right? And that's why we're getting this little boost of energetic empowerment, you know, through making those changes. Yeah, I love that Pluto energy. Pluto also rules Scorp Scorpio, Scorpio, <laughs> Lord of the Underworld. It's about being able, not being afraid to look at our shadow side and make the necessary changes and not being an a-hole <laughs> while you're doing it <laughs> in an ideal world. But, you know, that Black Moon Lilith in, um, in Leo is really going to want that ego validation. Not only from people in our outside, but Mars and Cancer wants it from people that are closest to us. And I think there is a level of importance, but we also have to take note of places. Oh, uh, there's another one. And this is the fourth house. I was just talking about this. So being mindful of family, loved ones that surround you. Things might be changing. And kind of having, yeah, more of a diplomatic perspective about the tension. Opposition really creates that conflict, that strife. It's opposing forces. You might be picking up a lot around that this week. But there's that rebellion with Aquarius. It's, it's taking a further step. To not be afraid to empower yourself. That's what this season is all about, right? Making those changes that you've been wanting to, hoping for. You know, that's the side of it. We can fantasize, again, how we want things to look. But we also have to make the practical steps and changes. And that's what this Aries energy is giving us. We have the opportunity. It's favorable right now. It's a good time to plant seeds, like I said, to be expansive, to support yourself when you're not getting that from your outside environment. It's going to be a little bit twisty, right, in our mind, our emotions at times. But that's why we have to, I love this Vesta, that's why we have to stay devoted to the goal. <laughs> the task at hand. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Uh, this is for the week of April 10th through the 16th. Sending so much love and blessings to whatever you're going through. I'm always here for love and support. I love helping others, whether that's through reading, energy healing, wellness consult. Um, big thumbs up. If it resonated, drop comments below. Let's build and grow the community. Lots of love and blessings. Thank you.